Welcome to Immigration Talk with Attorney Anish. Attorney Anish is an immigration lawyer who has been certified as a specialist in immigration and nationality law by the State Bar of California's Board of Legal Specialization. Hello, everyone. This is Attorney Anish Fashista, and this is Immigration Talk with Attorney Anish. I hope everyone's enjoying their week here in Los Angeles. It rained almost the entire time. But we have sunshine today, and we should have sunshine this weekend. It's January 18th, 2019. Uh, my office offers immigration advice and services uh, for U.S. immigration legal issues. We have two offices, one in Los Angeles and one in Fremont, which is in the Bay Area of California. And I have this radio show to address common questions that I receive during the consultations that I conduct for my potential clients and, and in the course of the services I provide to my existing clients. Uh, today's topic I wanted to discuss is uh, marriage-based green card application or marriage-based adjustment of status here in the United States. It's something I get asked about a lot, and uh, the most common question about it I get are what forms need to be filed. Now, it's not uh, any secret. It's just hard to figure out on USCIS's website. USCIS, of course, is United States Citizenship and Immigration Services. And then when one applies for adjustment of status, that means applying for a green card within the U.S., whether based on marriage, based on some other family relationship, or based on employment, then that green card application is going to be filed with United States Citizenship and Immigration Services, which I'll call USCIS. And there's no also no secret about how to obtain the forms. The forms are available for free at USCIS.gov. So I don't have any problem telling uh, people who are listening what forms they need to apply for a green card based on marriage. And for purposes of this recording, I want to be clear that uh, I'm not going to be discussing who is eligible and who is not eligible, whether uh, criminal history, fraud history, deportation history plays into the equation is something that uh, you'd have to discuss with an immigration lawyer. My office provides those services, and uh, initial in-person consultations are free of charge. Uh, if you would like to make an appointment for such a consultation, you can call me at area code 323-592-9980. Again, that's 323-592-9980. You can also call the Bay Area number if that's what you want. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, to make an appointment with the Bay Area office in Fremont, California, that number is area code 510-585-3990. Again, that's 510-585-3990. You might also see on the website that there's a 1877 number, and that's fine. You can call that number too. That number is 877-227-9714. Again, that's 877-227-9714. If no one answers, please leave a message. You can also email me at consult at lawfirmav.com. That's C-O-N-S-U-L-T at L-A-W-F-I-R-M-A-V. Those are my initials, A's and Apple, V's and Victor, dot com. Consult at lawfirmav.com. You can also go to the website, www.lawfirmav.com. Click on a link that says contact us. Over there, you can submit an inquiry online. I read them all. They come to me. Uh, so if you have specific questions about your particular case, then I suggest I advise that you talk to an immigration lawyer. Uh, but if you just want to know what forms are required, I'm happy to tell you. The first form you'll need, and this is, of course, assuming that there's no uh, lawyer assigned to the case, because if there's an, there is a lawyer, then the lawyer has to prepare a different uh, set of forms, uh, mostly two additional forms that are called G28s, one for the uh, U.S. citizen or permanent resident spouse and one for the foreign national spouse. Uh, but for purposes of this recording, we're going to assume there's no lawyer. We're also going to assume that the petitioning spouse is a U.S. citizen because if the petitioning spouse is only a green card holder or a lawful permanent resident, that changes the timing of the filings and not everything can be filed all at once. But let's... Uh, Let's go back to uh, what forms are required for a non-lawyer case uh, in which the petitioning spouse is a, United, is a United States citizen. The first form you need is an I-130. Uh, if you go to USCIS.gov and you click on forms, you'll be able to scroll down and see I-130. What's an I-130? An I-130 is something that's completed and signed by the U.S. citizen petitioner, simply stating that I'm a U.S. citizen and this is my spouse. Please recognize the relationship. An approved I-130 in and of itself provides no benefit to the foreign national, but it is a requirement for one to get a green card through a family member, including a spouse. 
The form is not that complicated, but it is tedious. It asks a lot of questions, a lot of questions about the U.S. citizen spouse's history, and it asks some questions about the foreign national spouse. More questions about the foreign national spouse are found in the next form. That's called the I-130A. That is a supplemental form to the I-130 and, that, and is used only for marriage-based cases. If you're looking to file for your parents or for your kids or for uh, your siblings, you don't need the I-130A. But if you're filing for your spouse, then you do. The I-130A is also tedious and asks a number of questions about uh, the foreign nationals' employment and residential history, and also whether the foreign nationals in the United States. If filing for adjustment of status and you want to file the I-130 and the I-45 at the same time, then the, I, the foreign national would have to be in the United States. Whether or not it's wise for the foreign national to file for adjustment of status and how long to wait after entering, those are questions that are not included in this radio show. That's something you'd have to talk to an immigration lawyer for in a more private setting, again, in a, in a consultation, whether in person or, or on the phone or through Skype. Uh, after that, the next form is the I-485, and that's the actual green card application. It has a long title. I think it's Application to Register Permanent Residence or Adjust Status. I like to call it a green card application. Uh, that's signed by the foreign national. Um, and that has a lot of questions that are similar to what's in the I-130A, but USCIS asks that you complete it all the same. So after you're done with the green card application, uh, what you need is an I-864. An I-864 is the affidavit of support. Um, the affidavit of support is signed by the petitioner. So, so far we have four forms, two of which are signed by the petitioner, that's the I-130 and the I-864, and two of which are signed by the foreign national, that's the I-130A and the I-45. The I-864 is the affidavit of support. We need to prove that the foreign national will not use uh, government services to pay for their needs. And if they do, or if they do, then um, then the government can go after the petitioning spouse to be reimbursed. Whether or not the petitioner's income is sufficient to uh, for the affidavit of support, whether the documents prove the necessary income, whether a joint sponsor is required, those are all questions, all good questions, but not encompassed within this radio show. Uh, after the I-864, and usually I would say not required at the time of filing is the I-693. That's the medical evaluation that needs to be conducted by what USCIS calls a civil surgeon, but uh, that's really just a, a medical doctor who has on USCIS's list to conduct such medical services, and USCIS has a website where you can search for doctors based on your zip code uh, to find the doctors around you that you can go to to have this examination done. If it's the doctor you normally go to, great, but if the doctor you normally go to is not on that list, then you cannot get the medical done, the I-693 done by that doctor. Now, the issue about the I, the, uh, the medical is that they're only good for a year. And given the long time frames that USCIS has regarding adjudicating green card applications uh, and many locations taking longer than a year, uh, I would say that's probably not smart to do the medical, especially if it's the one thing that's delaying you from filing right away, if filing right away is what you want to do. The medical can always be taken to the interview, and most likely no one's going to even look at it until um, the medical is is completed. Um, well, that's not true. They do look at it, but they won't scrutinize it the same way that the interviewing officer will. If it's a marriage case, there's going to be an interview. And uh, if the medical at the time of the interview has expired because it's more than a year old, the foreign national will have to do another medical <laughs> and most doctors will charge to do a second medical evaluation. Uh, but if you want to include the I-693, then go right ahead. Uh, we're close to the end, so don't think there's going to be a million forms. The next form is optional. There's no additional fee for it. It's the I-131 advanced parole application. What's an advanced parole? Uh, it's the document that permits one to re-enter the U.S., uh, after leaving while the green card application is pending. If the green card application ultimately is approved, you don't need the advanced parole because the green card will serve as a, as a document that allows you to enter that in combination with the foreign national's passport. Uh, the next document, the next form, sorry, is the I-765. That's the employment authorization document application or the work permit application, whatever you want to call it. 
Uh, just like with the I-131, which has multiple options and you would pick advanced parole, the I-765 has multiple bases. And for a pending green card application, the basis that one would have to enter is C9. It's a lowercase c, um, followed by a 9. You might see a part on the I-765 that has th three parentheticals. So what you would enter in the first parenthetical is a lowercase c, and the next parenthetical is a 9, and the next parenthetical you leave blank. And that's it for the forms. Uh, so it's not too many. But uh, if you want to get every benefit possible, then you would have to include all those forms. And if you want to avoid a uh, request for evidence that could delay the case, then you want to make sure you complete those forms properly and you support the, those forms with the documentary evidence required. Uh, like I said, the I-131, the advanced parole application, and the I-765, the work permit application, they're optional. But uh, currently they're taking four to six months to adjudicate those. And uh, in some places they're taking a year or more for the green card interview. So if your foreign national spouse wants to have the work permit or travel document while they're waiting for the green card interview, uh, then they'd want to fill those out. Not too hard, but they can, they can be tedious. There's no additional fee, but you have to include passport stuff, photographs. Currently, the filing fees are $1,760 for that entire package. It's $535 for the I-130, and it's $1,225 for the green card application. There's no fee for the I-138, no fee for the I-864, no fee for the I-693, other than what you have to pay the doctor. There's no uh, fee for the I-131, and there's no fee for the I-765. So that's pretty much it. Now, again, I don't want to give this disclaimer multiple times, but I think I have to because I don't want people to be misled. Whether the foreign national spouse is eligible, whether it's wise to apply for adjustment of status within the U.S., uh, what are the issues, what's going to be asked at the interview, uh, are you filling out the forms correctly, those are all questions that are for a more personalized consultation, whether in person or, or on the phone or via Skype or by email. So I don't want to get into that. I just want to advise people on the basic forms one would, have, one would file to do a simple marriage to U.S. citizen based green card application process within the U.S. And I hope I've done that. Uh, anyway, stay tuned for my next show, which will come out next week. Uh, I hope everyone has a nice long holiday weekend. Be safe out there and uh, be with me very soon. Thank you.